So my channel is kind of all over the place, so I wanted to tie things up by sharing what I've been working on recently and answering some questions that keep coming up. I spent the last two weeks implementing OpenAI's new reinforcement learning algorithm, Phasic Policy Gradient. This paper was published two months ago, and it looks like it might be the new state of the art in reinforcement learning, so I wanted to code it on myself to understand it better. I've also been doing OpenAI's reinforcement learning competition these last couple months, and I figured this would be a good problem to try applying the algorithm to. You guys have been asking how I'm learning all the math to do projects like this, and the answer is kind of boring, because I took calc, linear algebra, and statistics in school like every other CS major. Though, if you're brand new to this, I like this book, Mathematics for Machine Learning. Although personally, I think what's more important than any particular resource you use is just being comfortable with not knowing everything. So for me, if I'm reading a paper and I don't know a word or a formula and I think it's really important, I will spend some extra time to Google it and think hard about it instead of just accepting it as a fact. The goal of the competition is to implement a single RL algorithm that can learn to play 20 different games, and each of the games have procedurally generated levels, which is why it's called the proc gen competition. So you submit your code to their test servers and they train separate agents for each of the games using your code base. The key points being that you can't hard code game specific logic into your algorithm and you only get about two hours of training for each game. I spent literally all day for two weeks implementing this phasic policy gradient algorithm because the starter code for the competition was very hard to work with and it was too difficult to port over the official implementation of the paper that the authors wrote. Unfortunately, I was only able to get the training to somewhat stabilize a few days before the deadline and I didn't have time to optimize it enough to get a good score for the competition. I'm not going to explain how phasic policy gradient works, but if you look at the pseudocode, it's deceptively simple, and I think that's true of a lot of ML algorithms. There's only a few important formulas here, but the funny thing is that once you put the pieces together, it's extremely complex, and if you read the paper, you can tell that even the authors don't really know why it works. I'm the kind of person who gets a lot of satisfaction from understanding why things work. So the fact that ML is still kind of a mystery makes it more interesting to me. Though I think if I were to put 100% of my efforts into doing these competitions, pushing the state of the art, maybe doing a PhD, I would probably get bored of that and I don't think it would be the most efficient use of my time or skills. So I don't think I'll be doing another one of these competitions anytime soon. Though I'm glad I did this one because in RL, it's just really hard to evaluate how well your code is actually performing. So having a benchmark like this, which is a small problem and relatively standardized, it just gives you some perspective on the field and it's worth spending a little bit of time thinking about it. If I was actually trying to win the competition, what I should have done and what most research scientists would do when they're trying to win competitions like this is to set up a fast and reliable way of mimicking the official scoring system. I could only submit to the official competition servers twice a day, and after submitting it would take hours to evaluate my code, so this slowed me down a lot. I don't actually have an NVIDIA GPU, so I always train my models on the cloud, which is why I picked Linode as today's sponsor. I'm going to do this sponsorship differently because I use cloud GPUs every day. So I'm just going to show you exactly the message that Linode sent me and then I'll comment on how it relates to my own workflow. Alright, this is what I got from Linode. It's pretty similarly formatted to what my sponsors usually send me. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. Whether you're an experienced developer or just starting out, you can build on Linode. Start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application. Or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy your game servers, websites, your own VPN, and much more. So basically, they're saying that you can use your server to host whatever you want, which is pretty standard. If you're creating your own AI and machine learning projects, they have GPU instances powered by the NVIDIA RTX 6000. That's a ton of computing power available to you in the cloud, and at 150 per hour, Linode's GPUs are the best price to performance ratio in cloud computing, with way better specs and literally half the price of AWS. Okay, so it's important to differentiate between creating and deploying your application, because when I'm deploying a model, I think very carefully about the hardware I use, the infrastructure, because it could end up costing a ton of money. But then when I'm developing, I just want the fastest GPU at the lowest price point. And so that's when I would definitely use Linode because the NVIDIA RTX 6000 is very similar to the AWS P32X large instance. That is the fastest single GPU instance that AWS offers. But then Linode is half the price, so just go with them. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. 
So one of the most annoying things if you're new to machine learning is running other people's code because most researchers don't use Docker. And even if they take the time to write a pip requirements file for all the Python packages, there's usually a lot of OS packages that you have to install first so then it doesn't work. So having 24 seven customer support for ML could be much more useful than say if you're building a web application where everything is pretty standardized and you can just Google it. Linode is giving all of you guys a hundred bucks in free server credit. So definitely go sign up at linode.com slash Wilquan. Linode is an excellent hosting company compared to some shitty hosting companies. Like for example, my own company, 72D server hosting. I wanted to give an update on this because my first viral video was about how I built this business. And then I made some update videos in November trying to grow the business. And then I just stopped working on it because I want to focus on machine learning and I'm not really that interested in game server hosting. But since then, I hired my friend to run the business. So now I don't really do anything. And we also passed 60K in revenue. So that's pretty cool. I want to sell the business because I've never actually sold a business before. So I'm working with an M&A firm, but I'm not really sure what the timeline is for that. And I'm totally new to this, so we'll see what happens. Also, I'm still looking for an ML engineering job. I didn't end up getting that job at TikTok. Things were going pretty good until the last technical interview, which is mainly about implementing personalized search. And I did not know the popular techniques for doing this off the top of my head. I haven't actually applied to any other jobs since then because I wanted to focus on this competition. So now I'm going to do that. In terms of my career goals, I've been watching George Hotz recently, and I really like the mission statement of his self-driving car company, Comma AI. So as usual, I'm going to steal it. What I want to do on a day-to-day -day basis is to somehow find a balance between fundamentally improving machine learning and building many shippable products along the way. I think the two activities complement each other really well because even though business goals might orient my initial research direction, science is just very open-ended. So the things you discover open up new opportunities. It kind of reminds me of when I used to make games because I would design and code at the same time and I would change the design while I'm coding and playing around with stuff. I don't want to be somebody who's known for one specific product or innovation and say, guys, this is my masterpiece or something like that. I think that works for some people, but I've always noticed about myself that I do better work when I'm pushing hard in several areas at once. And if you're interested in psychology, I really like what Dr. K has to say about personality types. I've changed a ton from a couple years ago when I was all about lean startup and shipping products quickly with proven technologies. And I've also changed a lot from a year ago when I wanted to be a mainstream media personality. And I'm not saying one goal is better than the other. It's more just what I feel like doing. And for now, I think being in the intersection between business, science, and content creation is more exciting than just picking one of the three. Next project is going to be reinforcement learning again. After this competition, I'm thinking I need to do something much less obscure and probably easier so I can actually get it working well. I haven't decided which one of my ideas to go with yet, but I'll figure it out and I'll see you in the next one.